Hello everybody and welcome to this mini lecture series on the Koopman operator. This is a concept that has been around for almost 100 years. It was originally introduced by Bernhard Koopman and John von Neumann. And the core idea was to study nonlinear complex dynamical systems using tools from linear systems theory. At that time, quantum mechanics was really popular and we have all these linear operator concepts in quantum mechanics. So it seems to be a good idea or natural idea by now to try to carry over these concepts from linear systems from, from the quantum world to, to classical systems. And so what we want to study is a dynamical system of this type. So we do have a state X that is in, in this case defined in discrete time, but there will be an elegance in, in continuous time as well. And this is usually a point in Rn, so the state is n-dimensional. And we do have a nonlinear flow map F that propagates this state ahead in time in a discrete time fashion. So taking xk, we use the nonlinear function to produce xk plus 1. And all sorts of dynamical systems are modeled in this nonlinear fashion. This looks very abstract, but we can consider fluid dynamics, molecular dynamics, robotics, all sorts of complicated systems where we have a prediction ahead in time. Right? And some of these systems have finite dimensional state spaces, like in robotics, we have a number of arms and joints that we want to model. In fluid mechanics, the state is usually infinite dimensional, but we are mostly going to consider the situation where we study discretized versions even in this PDE case so that we have a very large N that can be found using finite elements, for instance. Okay, but what we want to do in the series now is to you know, understand a little bit why the Koopman operator is such a beneficial framework, why it is today so popular and not, let's say, 50, 60 years ago, and what we can do with it. Right? So we are going to study systems, do modal analysis, and study also the properties that can be used in control. But I would also address in a little bit the drawbacks or, let's say, controversies that exist around the Koopman operator and try to uh, discuss a little bit what's good and what maybe not so suitable and, and where other methods excel. So let's dive right in and start with a little motivation. I've already said, right, at the heart of our dynamical systems uh, theory here is, is a nonlinear flow map. So a system that behaves nonlinearly and is thus hard to study. And we know that linear systems are much, much easier studied. Okay, so why is that? If we consider linear systems, And this is due to several reasons, in fact, but what can summarize this in the sense that we have fast predictions. So they're usually easy to simulate. And we have modal decomposition. Or what can also be cast as spectral decomposition, let's say. Right, so we, if we have a linear system, let's say something like x k plus 1 is a times x k, where a is an n by n matrix, then we can study eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this A matrix and thereby get a better understanding of the dynamics. So we are at a loss if we study nonlinear systems because these linear properties do not exist and we are limited in how to study these systems. And this is where the idea of Koopman came in. And in fact, it's in hindsight a very um, natural idea but it was discovered or rediscovered roughly 20 years ago, mostly by Igor Mesic, to, to study this nowadays, now that we have more popular and more advanced numerical techniques. So the idea was to replace F 
and I don't mean to, to substitute it in, a, in an exact manner, but to replace f by a linear operator that I'm going to name k in this curly way, and we're going to use the, the regular k4 matrices later on, but we cannot replace it in place. What we need to do is we need to define an, a new space that the, this operator acts on. So what we want to do, excuse me, we want it to act on what's called observable functions. And I'm going to call it Psi, which is now a function mapping from the state space. So I'm taking my state X and I'm mapping to the complex numbers or for simplicity, I will consider real numbers here. The standard definition is in real number scalars but one can easily extend this to vector valued outputs and I'm going to use capital N for the number of observables that we're going to consider. So what we have is that this Koopman operator now is an operator that does not act from Rn to Rn on the state space, but from a function space, let's call it f, to f. In uh, a linear way, right? So this is a linear vector space. Linear space of functions. And the Koopman operator now is the operator that composes with the flow. So what we can say is, or what we simply define, is that the operator does not act on state space or on the state x, but on the observable function psi. And then if we then evaluate the state or plug in the state into this new observable function, what we essentially get is the observable function composed with the flow, meaning that we observe the system at the next time step. Okay, So this can be drawn in a simple diagram. What you can see is, let's say we do have our state x k here, and we map it forward in time to state x k plus 1, and this is usually done using this nonlinear flow. Then what the Koopman operator provides us is a parallel system. And so using this psi observable function, we get uh, an observed quantity zk that is propagated forward in time in a linear fashion using the Koopman operator that acts on the function. So what we get is z k plus 1, which would be the same as if we just propagate forward the state in time and then use the observable function. And so what we have traded is a system, usually on a finite dimensional state space, but a nonlinear mapping, by a linear operator that maps forward in time this observable function, but in a linear fashion. So we have to uh, uh, act on, on function spaces, on infinite dimensional spaces, so it's also an infinite dimensional operator, but it is linear. And so this is the trade-off that we are going to study. We are going to you know, discuss details how to use this with, with modern numerical schemes, and, and then how to further use this in combination with control or other interesting um, tasks. So before we conclude, maybe one small example 
that uh, I want to use to visualize this, if you look at this snapshot of a fluid flow example, right? So we have the Navier-Stokes equations and in nonlinear PDE on a rather high dimensional state space in, in discretized form here. And it's going to evolve forward in time. And what I'm going to study is two measurements that will be shown in red and white here. And it's going to be two uh, velocity parts on these red and white dots be behind the cylinder that, that we flow around. And so what f is, it's not these measurements, but it's the function that maps the state to these measurement values that I've denoted by z in this little sketch. And so let's see what happens. So what you can see is that this observable function really maps forward um, or maps from the state space to these two z values and does so in this periodic manner. So what we see, a periodic system gives rise to this periodic signal. But where this is a nonlinear mapping, the flow map, this one is an operator-based perspective where we map forward in time the function that maps from here to here. And so stay tuned for the next videos where we will discuss more of this in a lot more detail. Thanks a lot.